Today, we're going to look at Origami Yachts, which is the third song on the album. It's a more acoustic, slightly vocal track. This one is actually a song that I've been working on for the longest, I think. I came up with the guitar riff back in 2017, which is a lifetime ago. I recently discovered the recording on my phone, just going through old files, and I decided, why not just remake this? So I just started from scratch again, and just kept the ideas I had from that song. This song doesn't really have a direct message, but more of a scene that I wanted to capture. Maybe some children folding origami boats and setting them free in a river and watching them float away. I decided to take that image and try to figure out how it sounds like. I guess the symbol for this song is the most straightforward as well, because it is literally just an origami yacht. But without delaying too much, let's just jump into the song. First, let's look at the samples. I knew I wanted the image of a river flowing. Why not just go to a river and record it? There's a forest reserve just outside my state and it has a lovely river inside it. So I just recorded the sound of that river. Next up, the fountain in my college. I wanted to capture the sound of people folding paper to make an origami boat. So I did just that. I took a book and I folded some pages and just recorded the sounds of those pages rubbing against each other and flipping it. And just to give the extra immersion, I added some panning from the left all the way to the right. And that acts as a good introduction to the song, as well as a good transition to different sections. And at the end, I leave the song by flipping all the pages back. I guess that's all of the samples. They're very simple, very small, but it really adds to the scene that I wanted to paint. Next up would be the guitar. So the first track I recorded was this one, and it's a very basic plucking pattern. When I first settled with that section, I realized that the introduction sounded too abrupt. So what I did instead was cut out a section of my original guitar recording where I strum out. And then I reversed it. And with some automation, that acts as a good introduction to the song because it fades in the guitar sound and then it transitions straight to the actual forward sound. Although the next track here, arrangement-wise, is this Noodles track, I'm not going to cover that yet. I actually recorded this lead first. It's actually just like the three blind mice, so it's three blind mice, but whatever. So then I changed that up a bit, and I ended up with this driving lead for the song. The rest of the song is just harmonies over harmonies of that guitar. So the first harmony I added was this one. And the next one was a bit higher than that, which gives a feeling of it rising. I also made sure to pan the tracks in alternating directions, as the first one that comes in will be on the left, the second one that comes in will be on the right, and the third one will be on the left. So it feels like they're coming in from different directions. And it kind of evens out the mix. Together, the lead harmony sound like this. After I recorded those sections and I played it back, I felt like it wasn't big enough. So I decided just to explore around that fret on the guitar, go up and down, up and down, and I made this noodling bit. I didn't have a lot of free time at that period of my life, so when I had one day off, I decided just to sit down in my room, finish up any recording that needs to be done. But that brought its own challenges with it. Because just outside my room, there was this broken alarm. It's a fire alarm. It would periodically give off this beep. So look for it here. Did you see that? At 3K. And although it's kind of subtle, it keeps happening and it was really annoying. 
And no matter how many takes I recorded, I just couldn't get rid of it 100%. So I just decided to take the best takes with the least amount of that noise and just EQ it. So what this does is I cut off the frequency at 3K. Since that sound was pretty much only existing at this frequency, just by deleting that frequency, I lost the sound. And I did this for every single guitar track. And then at the end, right after that rise in harmony, I decided to change things up a bit. This part was not in the original plan that I had for the song. I just felt like just rising like this and ending abruptly would be too boring. So I improvised a bit and added some new chords. I decided to fit in a nice minor chord there. Just to give a little hint of sadness. After coming up with that backing part, I just noodled over it. And over that, I just layered the high guitar parts. And since I really liked that noodling part, I decided to layer it again twice. First time with a low sound. And then again with a higher sound. Together, this chorus section on the guitar sounds like this. I think I won't go into the MIDI instruments yet. I'm gonna talk about the vocals first. The first vocal track I recorded was this one. And let your dreams set sail. It's quite bad quality, but to salvage that track a bit, I just recorded more takes of that same line to layer them over the original one just to support it. Pan to the left. Pan to the right. After playing that back, it still sounded like it was too far forward, so I had to do some panning on the very far left and the very far right. So this is the one that's very far to the right. I'm not exactly sure why, but for the left one, I decided to go for a different harmony. I then recorded a take of the same melody but with a lower octave this time. After recording those, I felt like I needed to have a bit more variation when I came to the dreams part because I needed to emphasize it. So I added a bit more harmony. So once again, although the tracks are individually not like great, as a whole, I like the atmosphere that it brings. It still felt like the vocals came out of nowhere, a bit too sudden. So I needed a little pre-chorus to introduce the listener to my voice before I go all out. So I just came up with Your Life Just Started So. 
Although we may be at a part of our life where there's a lot going on and we don't look forward to the near future, it's good to remember that our life just started. There's so many things in store for us that we don't even know. We can plan all we want, but some things just happen and usually they're great things. I don't have a main recording of that line, but I did record left and right tracks. Your life just started so Your life just started so Together? Your life just started so it still felt a bit too sudden, so I added a bit of ooze to kind of transition between the instruments and my voice. And the last thing that I added for the vocals were these little da's and ba's. bit messy and off time but it works in the context of the song and then I have my ba 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 it is so off tune but I don't care and as a finishing touch just to make the vocals a bit smoother I took the last part of set sail and then I reversed it to make it sound like a riser this one was panned to the right and I took another recording of set sail reversed it and then panned that to the left so the final vocal arrangement sounds like this. Your life just started so fold these tales and let your dreams set sail. Now that we've looked at the vocals, the final part will be all these MIDI instruments that I added just to spice up the track. The first thing they added were these shakers because without them, the song did sound a bit dry. So this is without. And this is with. So now it sounds a bit more wet and a bit more lively. Next, to add to the spice, one of my favorite Spitfire Labs instruments, which is the dulcimer, and it always gives that nice sparkle. For the first one, I copied the notes over, raised them an octave, and made it sound like this. For the second variation, I just accentuated the notes on the lead guitar, the Three Blind Mice melody. with a bit of a transition in between. And once again, I did my panning trick from left to right, left to right, left to right. So it sounds like it's going around your head. To emphasize that lead guitar melody, the Three Blind Mice one, again, a music box. And just to add a bit more variation to the otherwise kind of simple melody, I added in this soft piano, which accentuates this part of the guitar noodles. On the soft piano, it sounds like this. It's also an excuse for me to sneak in a soft piano in every song on this album because I just love this instrument so much. One thing that I found that works really well for making a song sound a bit more interesting is listening back to your recordings and finding all the little mistakes and stuff that you didn't expect. In this case, I was listening to my main guitar track and I stumbled across this ringing noise that happened when you press a string too lightly as you pluck it. Did you hear that? Just before the annoying alarm. And I liked it so much that I decided to emphasize it through this ambient guitar. I like that sound so much that I reused it for the transition between the pre-chorus and the chorus. And for the chorus, I just repeated my vocals. There's a lot of pinch bend there, which is more than I need, but I don't know, I just left it there, I guess. And I guess the last thing to look at was his little claps. Initially, I wanted to add percussion to the entire chorus, but in the end, the song really didn't need it. It would take away from the song's like gentleness and organicness, so I just left the claps as a transition here and cut them off. I'm not going to play the whole song for you. You can listen to it somewhere here, but since I really like the transition and the chorus, the end part, you can have a listen.
I guess that's all for now. Um, next week, I may or may not make one of these videos. I might work on another project, which is sort of a collaboration with some of my friends, but we'll see how it goes. Until then, bye-bye.